Azure Container Apps is one of many cloud-native offerings in Microsoft Azure, which enables you to run microservices and containerized applications on a serverless platform. Azure Container Apps enables executing application code package in any container with any runtime or programming model. With Container Apps, you enjoy the benefits of running containers by leaving behind the concerns of managing cloud infrastructure and complex container orchestrators. My name is Boyan Verhonik, Senior Cloud Solution Architect, working for Microsoft. And in this session, we will explore Azure Container Apps, going from simple demos to more complex requirements by moving our application to containers, deploying them on our private registry manually or by using command line, and then leveraging automatic deployments via GitHub. We will improve our applications gradually and explore different features and options provided by Azure Container Apps solution. When saying part of cloud native, we mean by integrating different building blocks to achieve your business goals. You can build your cloud native apps with Azure fully managed services, seamlessly integrated development tools, and built-in enterprise-grade security. You can use the tool and techniques and technologies of your choice while implementing a microservices-based cloud native architecture that makes it easier to develop and scale your applications. You can work efficiently through an end-to-end -end development experience, coding, debugging, deployment, monitoring, and management with integrated tools and DevOps as a process. For example, you can build container apps, connect to SQL database, store files to Azure storage, audit access and react based on policy, use services to translate text, recognize objects, get transcripts, and more from cognitive services. Enable just-in-time access, verify container images for vulnerabilities, set up continuously delivery integration with enterprise-grade solutions, plug in proven community plugins to efficiently scale and manage app, and much more, which is added each month. In short, it enables you to build not just container apps, but enterprise-grade solutions with focus on the logic and application itself. The rest is covered by Microsoft and Azure. By having multiple options to run containers in Azure, where does our Azure Container Apps, or short ACA, fit in? You can run any containers in, in ACA. Its ability to scale down to zero to reduce cost can be quite useful in background scenarios. For example, you can execute jobs, scale to many instances, and after execution is finished, you scale down to zero automatically. Or you want to host web applications with your own domain, certificates, integrated application, with multiple versions for users. Or you decide to host APIs for your customers to consume by having an easy way to do blue-green deployments or A-B testing scenarios. Or perhaps you need a dynamic scale based on the CPU load or HTTP request or any other factors which is important for our needs without configuring complex environment behind the scenes. Or maybe you have multiple teams which is each building their own microservice and you need integrated support for failures, the tries, timeouts, distributed calls over the network, service-to-service -service invocation pops up, different internal and external services, and much more. Or maybe you decided to build a game and you need to scale, you need to spawn actors, you need to state management with different services, and you need to support without creating all of the infrastructure behind the scenes. This is just a tip of the iceberg of possible scenarios with ACA. But we already have a solution for that in Azure, which is called Azure Kubernetes Service. So how does that compare to ACA? AKS is infrastructure focus, which is which means that you are being highly flexible, where ACA is more focused on application as sees infrastructure as an abstraction. Now, what does that exactly mean? Now, in terms of control and cost, with AKS, you have full access to API server, you have high level control over the cluster configuration, and you pay for the nodes that you're using. ACA, on the other hand, is an abstraction built on top of Kubernetes without access to API server. You pay based on what you, what you consume. In terms of deployment and development, on AKS, you deploy via Kubernetes Deployment Manifest or YAML or Helm Charts or CLI. On ACA, you can use the portal, CLI, or infrastructure as code templates to deploy container apps. If we look at integration on AKS, you can install, but what you need to also do is maintain components like KEDA, Dapper, Service Mesh. You need to bootstrap them. On ACA, that is fully managed and supported. You're using the features without having to bootstrap them in the environment. Let's see this in action. Let's start by creating a resource inside Azure portal 
let's select containers as a category and then find container app. Let's press create to start with the wizard. In this wizard, we select the resource group where our application will reside, select some name, and then we configure the application environment. We will talk about the application environment a little bit later. Let's leave this as a default. Next, what we do is set up the container application. What we define here is what kind of container we'll be using. What you can do here, you can basically select either quick start image, which is a sample container application, which is running just a simple web app, but we can also select our own container registries. This is by default enabled to accept traffic from anywhere, which means that this will be publicly available on port 80. So let's go, let's go to the next step where we define tags, which are really, really nice feature to basically define value and name pairs to categorize resources, which can be really handy when we do some billing purposes or we apply some policies on the subscription level. So when we press create, what this will do will kick off a deployment. And what will happen is that if we refresh the, the process, it will give us the success of, it will give us a successful deployment. What we can then do is simply go to the application URL which, which we configured. Let's go back to the slides to learn a little bit more about environments. So let's go a little bit more into detail. So what happened behind the scenes? First, we filled out a few information about the container apps, resource groups in which region we would like to host the application, name of the application, and then we needed to specify an environment. We'll have the default options, which created default settings. But what is an environment? What are they? In short, they are the virtual boundary around a collection of container apps. In Kubernetes, we achieve the same logic with the use of namespaces. We define what we need and configure the environment based on the requirements. Let's see this in action. Let's navigate to the container environment. You can find the container environment in the overview tab. Let's click it and it will redirect us to the settings. It will redirect us to the page where we can then set up additional managed services like DAPR, certificates, Azure files, and where we can also configure streaming and monitoring options for our containers. Here we can see how DAPR can be configured without us putting up or bootstrapping everything from scratch. You can just use the services. What we can also do is define where our logs should be and metrics should be stored. Either we choose our Azure Log Analytics or Azure Monitor. And here we can also define what Log Analytics should we use. What we can then do is have one source for all of logs and metrics from our services that we have there. And we can even go and then search custom tables with specific information about the containers, what is the revision, what is the name, and of course, additional information, you know, is this available on which ports and so on, which can be reduced so when you're debugging our application from scratch. Environment is up and running. We can define services which will be available to our containers. And in this case, what we saw, we were running a simple container which was provided by the Arca team. What if we want to run different containers? What if we need to test out features with subset of users to get a feedback? Or maybe I want to apply changes without time, without time. Or maybe I want to go back to the previous versions of the containers. How to tackle that challenge? This is where our revisions come into a play. What revisions enables us to do is to have a different versions available, so-called snapshots, and we can decide how the flow of the traffic will go from us to services. Let's see this in action. We have a simple ASP.NET Core web application with two pages, environment and second page. First contains a code which reads an environment variable named message. That message is not in the system. Then it basically outputs environment variable not set. And then we have a second page which just displays some text. I built two containers, one with the link which contains MV files and the second one which contains both of the links. Let's go to the revision management and create a new revision where we will use our container which we, which we specified locally. So what I do in this case is select a container image, name it so that I know how and what I'm basically working on. Then in this case, we will select the web application 
that we deployed in this web application has a tag name simple web app environment. In this case, only environment link will be displayed. And here we can then add environment variables. In this case, we will use the manual entry to showcase how this can be done by injecting the environment variables in. We don't need the simple hello world demo, so we will delete this and we will name it with some name so that you know the revision that we can easily find it in the revision management. Let's create the revision. After a few seconds, it will provision and it will take all of the traffic that is available on this website. And now what we can do is go and click on this link and select the revision URL, which means it's a private URL, which you can then check if everything is okay. And now if we click, there's an environment variable, which we set is defined there. Now what we want to do is use this, the link with second page. So we want to create a new revision. So what we can do is go and select a container. We want to change this to the second page. In this case, we want to also change the, the value so that we can know what this value will be. And we save all of the changes appropriately. Now, of course, we name it in a way that we understand so that we can then refer to it when we need it and click create to basically create the second revision. When this will finish, we will see that we now have two revisions. One is the simple web and the second one is simple web with, with second page. And now the that one receives 100% of the traffic and let's test out to see if this works as expected. Now we have two links, environment valid second page, which we see here with updated environment variable. But what if we want to do traffic splitting? What if we want to set, for example, 30% or 50% or 40% of the traffic to go to a specific URL, to a specific revision? So this is where we can choose a revision mode multiple, where we can then define how much percent of the traffic will go to this case. For the demo purposes, we will use 50-50 so that you can see on each second request, it will basically display a different web page. So let's save all of these changes. And when these changes will be saved, what we can then do is check if the revision still works. So we can go to that revision, check if everything is as it should be. We can test out the solution. We can either send this link to the customer to test out the application so that we know that everything is as it should be. And now we can basically see if this works. So we go to the application URL, the application URL will then hit the envoy ingress and then the envoy ingress will then showcase what is possible or not. So let's refresh a few times so that we can see the result. As you can see, second page is now displayed and after refresh that is gone. In essence, what happened is that container app now has a multiple version or snapshot of the workload. And we can then decide by the business rules how to apply our logic and need without configuring Helm charts or any infrastructure behind the scenes. Our app is now running, but then we receive a lot of requests and the system is not handling the load based on what we expect. We need to scale the solution horizontally to handle the load. Even though we split the traffic, requests are still coming in and we're not handling the approach of having a resilient application. So how to configure Auto scaling. Let's check this in Azure. So let's go to the scale and replicas option and then select the revision that we want to work with. So we will work with the revision which has the second application, both links, and click edit and deploy. We have a tab option which is called scale. And on this part, we can then decide how will be how much replicas we will have. Now, since there's a requirement, there's a lot of HTTP requests coming in, we can then add a scale rule with concurrent requests, which will handle and which will scale based on that specific request. So when those requests will be met, it will scale the replicas accordingly up and down. Let's create the scale rule. And when the scale rule will be created, we can see that the traffic now, because we created a new revision, is zero. So we need to basically change the revision to 
single, we can leave it as this and define the traffic. But in our case, we want to have a support for automatic scaling based on our app URL. And in this case, now that it's successfully updated, we can then go and check the application if everything is working. And what we can see that now the replicas, now the configuration in this case is that we have minimum two and maximum 10 replicas. And now the system is provisioned to have all 100 requests coming in on that side. Now that we have the basics covered, let us use this knowledge and deploy a little bit more complex solution to Azure Container Apps. We will explore a solution on the local machine and then set up the environment in the cloud. Solution is already containerized and is located in our Azure Container Registry. If you want to follow along, you can use scripts in the repositories. Link is provided on the screen and go to the scripts folder where you will find various scripts for various tasks. Let's see the complex application in action. I built an application, a web application, which represents work tasks, which can be private, which can be public, which you can basically comment on, export to PDF, get statistic, and much more. The idea here is to have a web application. You have a database. In this case, the database is a SQL database. You're connecting to that database directly through a repository pattern. But then again, you have a web API, which is exposed internally, which means this application is connecting to that specific uh, API, getting back the results about statistics specifically for the signing users, about the work task, about daily task, public test, and so on. But then again, you also have a public access, which means that user can basically access the application through a web browser directly through web application or he can basically directly connect to the API that is exposed publicly to the outside world. Then we have a background application, a background service, which collects the data out of SQL database and then stores that data to a file which is located on the file system. In this case, this file is basically a JSON file with all of the statistics which is daily saved to a specific folder. And then this can be retrieved via API uh, or via SDK library back to the user on the system. So how does this look like in, in code? Let's go check inside of our development environment, the structure. Here we have UI, user interface, which contains the web application, the API, and then we also have the background service. Then we have generators, which are generating some data. So we populate database with some bogus data. Then we have the data layer, which basically represents our models, our repository patterns to connect to the database behind the scenes and many other useful services. So let's see this in action application to showcase how this application looks like and how does it work. This application will now run on the web server. You see below that we are running two applications. So one is local web, and then we have the report API. Now, when we go here, you see that I'm running on my uh, operating system. If I log in into the system, what I will get is now I'll be redirected to the dashboard. And here I have basically options to see my tests that are located here. And I can go inside of the task, see the comments of this specific specific task. What I can then do is go to home. And when I go to home, you'll see that here the API call was done. This stuff here that you see is basically retrieved from the report API that is available there, giving me latest stats about, about my own achievement. If I'm logging, if I'm not logging, I don't receive this, this information back. And then what I can do as well is go to the task, for example, the public task, and say that I would like to download PDF. And this is also issuing a call to the REST API, giving me back the statistic, public statistics about tasks which are available for a specific period of time. Okay, so let's deploy this application to Azure. Let's create a new resource. Let's go to the containers, create a new container app. Let's name our container application with some meaningful name like ConfWeb, and then create a new container apps environment where we will specify additional settings. 
let's name that conf n and then select for monitoring cloud or created block analytics before. Let's specify the container app in our container registry. I used a web for the application with the latest stack and let us enable the application to be accessible from the outside world with a port 80 on top. Let's review and create the, the solution and enter some text which will help us with the billing purposes. Let's review the, and create a deployment. Let's repeat the same story for the reports and also for the stats and all other applications that will be available for, for us to run. Let's repeat this for the report API. And let's do the same with our file stat server. The only difference here is that instead of accessing it from the external, we don't need external access. So we won't be configuring load balancer in this case because we don't need external access. Let's go and create some tags for the billing purposes and then review and create. And we are ready to start with the application itself. When this is finished, Let's go to the container apps. Let's click on our con container conf web. Let's check if the container is up and running by clicking on the application link. And we can see that the application is there. Let's try to create a new user, type in some details. And what you will see is a deployment error because we don't have a SQL defined. We can try the same stuff with the reports API, but because we don't have a API endpoint, what we can do is check in the log stream to see if the application is up and running. And we can see that there are some errors regarding environment variables. What kind of variables do we need? So in our user interface uh, web application, we have a few variables which we need to Set up. So if you go and check inside of the application itself, we have an API option, the URL to the report service. We have the connection string for the SQL database, and then we have some authentication options. Here below, you see an Azure storage settings, which is something that we will implement in the later stages. And the same is with the report API. So if you go here, so here we have the same options that you saw on the web application and the same uh, goes for stats service where we have only one option, which is SQL connection string. So let us first fix the connection string. Connection strings are sensitive data. So what we need to provide is a way to secure that data. And we will use, and we will use secrets inside of our container apps in order to secure our connection string so that malicious users cannot see the value. Otherwise, they will be able to connect to our database. Let us fix the web application. Here you will see that we have an option to add secrets and we will add secrets which are required in our application. So the first secret that we will be adding is SQL connection string. So we will name a SQL connection string as a key SQL con so that we can reference it later on. And we will add that to, to the system itself. What we will also add is two things which will then be ready for the later stages. First will be the API key because what we what we need in order to access the application from our from our web application is a key because based on that key the API will know that we are authenticated. So let us copy some key. 
And then we also add another secret, which is con salt. And let me add this as well. Hash salt. Hash is used to hash the route values. Let me add this as well. Now we have the secrets added. Let us first check the application so that we see what is the problem again. So let me open this web application. And as we saw before, when we go to the when web application will run. So let's go to the login page, register new user, say enter some data, and then register and we know that this application is not working. So let's use the secrets that we add added to the system. Let's go to the reviews and management. Let's open this web application and then choose uh, containers and then set edit and deploy. And in this case, we can then select the container image that was used. In this case, we are selecting the web and with the latest version. All others is the same. The only stuff that we will add here is environment variables. First thing that we need to add is the connection string. So SQL options, connection string. And let me add a reference secret and this secret will be SQL connection string. So we added the SQL connection string. Let me save the data and write it here so that we know what we are referring to and then create the revision. Now we can go back to the revision. So provision was successful. So let me go to the overview and let me run the application again. And now if we go to the login, say that we would like to register connection string. Let's say that we want to add boyan at outlook.com, some password, and when we do register, it basically goes through and redirects us to the pages. And now we can go to the tasks, public tasks, see all of the tasks, and basically perform all of the application that we want. So if you go to the home, you see that we don't have anything there. Now it takes a little bit time because we have a retry policy enabled with poly.net, zero result. So here you see that page is, is presented to us, but there's missing something because we didn't provide any, connect, any connection string to the reporting service. We fix the connection string. Now what we need to do is fix our reporting service access. So let's go to conf report and copy the application URL and go back to the conf web, select the containers and then choose edit and deploy and select the container that we would like to fix. And here you see that we have the latest version. What I did was I added uh, API key and hash, hash salt from the reference secret. What we need to do now is add a new option, API options, and then underscore report API URL. And in this case, it will be manual entry and this value that we have here. Let's save the, the revision, the container changes, and let's put in the name, which will be report API, and then create the revision. Let's go to the overview tab, open the web browser, login with boyan at outlook.com, log in, and we log in. What we can now do is create a task, for example, test task at 002222, publicly available, some data save, and we can add some comments. And now when we press the home button, what you will see is we get back the result, which is, which is the call from the API itself. So we fix the web application and report service. Now we need to fix the stats service as well. So we have a stats service, which stores the data inside of file. Since we didn't configure any volumes or something like that to store the data, what we get is an exception when we go to the log stream and get an exception that something is wrong. 
Now, here we explicitly said, because this is a background service, we don't have uh, ingress, right? So ingress is disabled. But what we want to do now is fix the, the specific problem. Now, in order to fix the problem, I already provisioned in the secrets tab a storage connection string for the Azure storage. So what will we be doing is basically saving all of the files, all of the statistics regularly each day to a file which will be located in Azure Storage. Now, in order for us to use this, I built a new container, which is, has a tag storage, which we can then leverage in order to fix this specific problem. In code, I basically provided an interface, an implementation, which uses blob storage behind the scenes to store the data inside of the Azure Storage. All that code is located on my GitHub. So let's go to the containers and edit and deploy the containers. And let us change this container to use the connection string. So in our uh, image, I have a storage option. And now what I will do is I will add the Azure storage options connection string. Reference the secret that we provided. Save name it storage and then create the revision when the revision will be created let's check if this application is running and now what we can do is go to the log stream and see our output from the log and after this will connect we will see that everything is okay and here you see that the stats was completed stored storing the data inside of the that file we fixed the stat report, but what is the challenge? In order to understand that, let's see the implementation itself, right? So in the task report controller, we have one API, which returns the most active task. And this uses a repository pattern. And in this case, work stats repository. So if I go into the details, this is an interface, and this interface has only three methods. So generate states, gets all, and gets and get stats based on some defined range. So what is the problem? So the, the file stat service uses uh, on local host, it uses file system to store the, the statistics. In Azure, what we did, we implemented uh, this interface with a blob storage. So if I go to the data, you see here that I have storage data, which is just one class, which, has, which implements this workstat repository, and here you can see that we have different parameters that we need to provide in order to in order for it to work with Azure Storage. Now, if we wanted to save this to another, for example, storage, in order to support another storage, for example, SQL or Cosmos DB, what we need to do is, is create a new library and then implement this work start uh, interface and register this in the reporting service. So in the reporting service, we can go uh, inside of the program CS, and here we have the configuration itself. Now, in my case, I configured Dapper already, but here, for example, what we could do is then, for example, say, let's copy this one, and we could, for example, I work stats, and let's say that we would like to use blob work stats repository, and then work stats um, Repository, the problem here is that now we have three parameters that we need to provide, which means that we need to then configure uh, the application settings so that we can then inject into the, the application. And then what we need to do is build a new container. So in this case, you see that we have specific settings that that's related to Azure storage. And then what we need to do in the Docker file, so in the containers folder, you'll, you'll find all of the Docker files. We need to then provide basically support for that and tag it, tag it appropriately. So how can we solve this, this problem? This is where Dapper comes into the play. But what if you want to change the storage and we don't want to change the container with new settings, new configuration, new environment variables, new tags, and so on? We could create a generic service, but then we can get different requirements for business or customers, and we, we need to adopt to that change. Maybe we need to observe the calls or we need to securely communicate between the services. This is where Dapper shines. Dapper is portable 
event-driven runtime that makes it easy for any developer to build resilient, stateless, and stateful applications that run on the cloud and the edge. It provides best practices for common capabilities when building microservices application the developer can use in a standard way and deploy to any environment. It does this by providing a distributed system building blocks. Each of these building blocks APIs is independent, meaning that you can use one, some of them in your application. So how does it work? It uses sidecar container pattern. When enabled, it will run sidecar container, listening for our request either via HTTP or via G gRPC. We issue command that we need state or event, and then the upper side container gets the data and returns info to us. What we need to do is configure the side type container to use the different stores, and our app is then calling in the same signature the API without us needed to change all of the structure behind the scenes. Let's see this in action. Let us first see the implementation in code. So this Dapper work start, start repository, what it does is basically just calls the Dapper client it builds the connection string, everything that is needed. And then we call get state async with the state that we want to achieve, or we want to save state on a specific data store with a specific key and the values that will be stored on the system. So let's see now how we configure data in our container apps. Let us enable data in our environment. So let's go to the container apps environment. Here we have Dapper Components option, and let's click Add. So when we add the component, we need to first provide a name, state store, for example, and then we need to provide a state type, which means a component which will then receive the state and store the state. In our case, we'll be using blob storage version one, and then we need to provide some additional metadata. So for example, first one needs to be account name, so which account will be using in this case? We have conf24 data storage. So this is the storage that we'll be using. Then we need to provide container name. So which container name, which containers will be, will be accessing? So we have everything stored inside of files. So let's go and enter that one. And then we will need to provide some authentication mechanism, Asian client ID. With, with specific value. So let's put in just some of the values inside uh, because we need to configure this uh, later on, which means what we need to provide to the, what we need to provide to the Dapper site car container is uh, authentication mechanism so that he can authenticate to Azure storage. In this case, the blob storage container name. And Next, what we need to provide is a scope. So which application will be able to load this, this component inside of their apps. So let me add this. We will change this later on because we need to configure the application yet. So let's go back to the, to the apps. Let's go to the app. And now what we need to do is enable Dapper. So we will enable Dapper in this case and provide some information. So we can provide the name. So in this case, conf reports which protocol we'll be using. Uh, in this case, we'll be using HTTP. So how will our application communicate to this sidecar container? And then we will save this setting. So when we save this, we configured our application to use Dapper. This will be saved. We need to define which application will be able to use the components that we are configuring inside of our container environment. So let's go now back to the container environment. In the Dapper components, and then click the state store. And what we should see now is an ability to add apps and let add conf reports add, which we configured earlier, and now basically save the Dapper component. So this state store will now be available to our application. So let's go inside of our application, and on the Dapper, you will see that now this application can use state store component, which we configured in the environment itself. Let us save all of the changes. And when these changes are saved, let's configure our component to be able to communicate to Azure storage. I compiled a new container, which I need to configure to use Dapper. So let's go to the containers, edit and deploy, and click on the conf reports storage 
and change this to Dapper. Let me use a image tag, which is Dapper, which uses the APS that we saw earlier. And what you need to do now is configure some settings. First, what we need to do is define Dapper options underscore store name. So the name that we specified. In our case, it would stay store. And then we also need to provide a key, right? So we need to provide a key, which is Dapper options key, manual entry, and then work starts dot dot. And let us say these changes, define here Dapper, and then create the revision. Why work stats? Because in storage account, we in the in, under the files container, we do have we have the work stats file, which component will be basically reading and writing to. So let's go back to see if this finished. So when this will refresh, we see that we have solution up and running. But if we click in the containers tab, what we can see is that we have now Dapper D. And Dapper D is now configured to basically listen. So this is a site container that is basically listening to requests that are coming in. So let's create a request. So let me clear this and connect. So let me go to the, so let's copy this URL, open a new tab and execute the request. So when we go to the log stream, what we then found out is that Dapper is basically getting an exception. And you can see here that it has a problem with the identity because we didn't configure the identity, failed to acquire a token. So if you go to the Dapper, as is, here inside what you can see that, you know, that IFID conf, instance specific instance, scope, and so on. So it basically communicated between, between the, the replicas, but it didn't execute it, the, the request to the, to the file, to the file storage. So let's configure the Dapper component to be able to authenticate to Azure storage. Let's create a user identity. And provide some information. Com24, source group, specify the region, and of course the name that you'll be using. And let's define also environment variables for billing purposes. Let's wait for this to finish, then go to conf24 to basically add access and rights to be able to access the storage. Let's use data contributor in this case and select the principles which will have the access. In this case, our principal will be user assigned identity with report Dapper user identity as we selected. Let's review and assign. When we did this, let's go back to that user identity, copy the client ID because this is something that we will need in order to set up our component. Let's go to that component and we had a uh, Azure client ID, which will now populate and edit the details. Now we need to go back to the application and configure the identity so that it will be aware of that identity. Let's go inside of user assigned identity and add the identity that we configured and save the changes. When this will be saved, let, let's go to the revision management. And since there were some changes, let's restart the revision to pick up all of the changes. And now check if the application is up and running, yes. Now let's go and issue another request to see the, if everything is working as expected. So let's refresh the URL. And now what we should see is a result back. Now the application is up and running. If you want, we can also define continuous deployment. So if we have our application on GitHub, we can easily sign in in GitHub, use the repository, and then define where those, where those images should be stored, when the application will execute the build process. In our case, com 24 
the GitHub action will tag the images with the GitHub commit ID, but we can modify that action based on our needs. To recap, what we saw is just a glimpse of what is possible with Azure Container Apps and how we can focus on the application, business lodging, and making sure we don't lose time on the infrastructure itself. For more details, check out these great resources, and thank you for listening.